Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm showing you the finished piece here, but then I'm going to walk you through the time lapse and uh, just point out some things that I think uh, can help you move through a, a piece like this. Not like this is overly complex, but there are some decisions that I had to uh, make along the way. And again, hopefully get you to start seeing the simplicity of certain aspects and then also you know, ways that you might maneuver so that you can continue through uh, to a finished piece. This took roughly nine hours. It's all digital, all in this software. So as I do this playback, I just want to show you, I start off with a very uh, crude kind of uh, gesture. So I just want to let you know here that the fir first and foremost, I'm trying to get the idea down in my mind and you see how bad it looks. Just, just funky looking. So I start to change things pretty quick. It's a pretty embarrassing stage of the work, but uh, I like to remember a video I saw that was talks about getting through the ugly stages of, of a painting. Uh, you blob in a lot of colors, looks pretty messy at first, but then you refine and sculpt and all that. So I try to remember that, that all of these are welcome to look bad and get bad sketches out of the way so that you can get to the more refined concepts. Uh, but again, at this beginning stage, I'm really just trying to capture an idea. So I had this idea of Spider Gwen uh, leaning back. I wanted the leg coming out towards us. You can see it looks very straight and flat at this point. And so I immediately noticed that. Also, the arm is very straight and stiff. Uh, so as I start to clean it up, uh, I, I try to figure that out. You know, so, so let me get back to you know adding a bit more gesture, a line of action, and see if that can help. Mainly at this point, I was really feeling like the leg was just way too flat. So I try to push that back use this, you know, using simple shapes to make these uh, adjustments so that I'm not committing uh, too awfully much into developing any sort of details yet. Okay, so it's, again, working through the gesture. You see here I use some of the wrapping lines of this leg coming forward. Uh, I find that to be a really good way to force my brain to kind of, you know, bring that 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 shape and those forms and volumes out towards camera. Love wrapping lines, talk about those all the time. And I draw like this little funky arm, look at that in the back, multiple times. Why am I getting this little funky arm? So I had this idea that it was tucked behind her body, but it just wasn't flowing right. And I ended up changing it uh, to something like that. Uh, you see, I also adjusted the arm up and I also changed the alignment. So this is a big one. I see a lot of artists making this mistake as if the shoulder, the upper arm and the the form are aligned too evenly it's almost and right here you can see it they're aligned very evenly and in fact i think it was worse even before that was it no that was it but it's, it's just too stiff because they're they're very straight to one another so you see just by uh you know i try to refine it here and then just by like maneuvering the curvatures of the uh the arm a bit more see how it's got a, more of a back and forth from the shoulder to the bicep to the form they just shouldn't be aligned. There should be a nice uh, rhythm going back and forth. I think also adjusting the arm up was you know, a little bit more of a better decision. And you see I even curved the leg, see that? I think I might have used the liquify there just to let you know. Yeah, see there's no redraw. I actually cheated and used liquify, but hey, serves a purpose, it gets it done, and I felt like the leg needed more of that bend. So that's another thing, and I probably could have pushed that further with the arm. I'm not sure if I end up doing that or not. But it's something that you can do. You can play around with the liquify and you could try to bend the arms and legs. Not a lot. I mean, if you go too far, they break. You know, they have a sense of looking broke. But uh, sometimes you need that bend and curvature in even a segment of like a forearm or a lower leg. And it really helps to give that, you know, that organic feel to the anatomy. So at this stage, I start feeling better about the pose. And I'm like, okay, now I want to get a background in here. I've been avoiding backgrounds. And I gotta quit doing it. If you're doing it, don't avoid them. Even if you draw, this is gonna sound bad probably, but I'm gonna say it anyways as I often will. Uh, even if you draw a bad background, it's at least prepping you for drawing an amazing background la later. I truly believe that. It's just like when you try to get back in the rhythm of doing something productive, the best thing you can do is take a small step because what happens, we build confidence with that. Small steps uh, lead to, to bigger steps later, but you know, sometimes we just need to accomplish a small thing and build that sense of, you know, uh, accomplishment, basically. You gotta um, walk before, or you gotta crawl before you walk. Don't walk before you crawl, it's counterproductive. Okay, so 
at this point you see I've drawn in a loose sketched background uh, now this is something else I get a lot of questions on on backgrounds and even though I'm not feeling great this wasn't one of my greatest backgrounds but it still has the same puzzle pieces working for it so I, I, I generally think a rough sketch is the best way to go I think that what happens generally is that your rough sketch will have just like your gesture and your pose does it will have more energy it will have more ideas that start to flourish or start to show themselves and then you develop that but if you start with a very structured uh, ruled line approach to everything it can stiffen up very quickly now obviously it's a background you think well it should be stiff right well it shouldn't it shouldn't it should have little elements of hand-drawn aesthetics and, and and imperfections you know those are always the coolest looking backgrounds in my own opinion that could be based upon my own stylistic set of choices uh, very interpretive or very subjective but um, at the same time you'll see that if you rule every single line the windows will look great or I shouldn't say that they'll look good they'll look uh, well executed in a sense of like alignment and things like that but they'll lack a sense of like areas of interest I mean even buildings when they're old they start to sag and slope and all these things occur so just think about that they don't really have to be as perfect as you think uh, one good way around this is to draw in a perspective grid so I start with a rough sketch to get a concept in place and then I drop in a perspective grid and a lot of times it'll make me realize that my perspective was bad in fact I'm gonna actually start opening up my comics uh, and taking pages that I really like and I'm just gonna start tracing grids left and right I want to really improve my knowledge of the underlying structure that's there and I feel like the best way to do that is to trace stuff that works you know copy from what works and not feel bad about that so so do that for your homework it's a great exercise it's easy to do we got comics everywhere right so then I start to ink in some shadows to uh, spider Gwen here I start to refine this now at this stage I'm I am using the ruled lines too much right about there I can see it in fact my perspective is off in a couple areas so I probably should move the vanishing point further away and I probably could have even gotten away with a three-point perspective I used a low uh, one-point perspective so I put the vanishing point to the lower left and that's what I utilized there so uh, but again I'm ruling every line a little too much and I started to see that so I start to loosen up um, and, and keep in mind too there's a bit of balancing that has to happen there back and forth because you can also uh, not rule enough lines and, and you get a lot of inconsistencies and imperfections as well so there's always a sense of balance that you have to find and so with the the um, this stage of the work I'm dropping in some flats I actually jumped to this a bit too early uh, it wasn't even done with all the line art I just sometimes I like to see it with a bit of color make sure it's moving in the right direction especially if it's a piece I know I'm going to color anyways I start to add in smaller details to help uh, shift the uh, feeling of size relationship to these these buildings uh, adding in some shapes of shadows little details on top little bits of rendering uh, and on and on it goes now one of the things I did here that is it's probably what's leading me to not be as impressed with the background not and you can tell me how you feel about it in the comment section below but uh, I did a lot of squares okay squares on top of squares and rectangles on top of rectangles and it's like almost like no matter what you do you can only get so much out of that okay it works really well for modern buildings so that building on the left you can see it I think it works well for that the ones on the right and eh, not so much I really should have carried those further looked at some other artists that I admire for their great background work and then paid uh, attention to those areas um, I went for what was easy now the thing is is that there's a time and a place for that sometimes I like to just do the easy thing get it done take take the entire piece to finality and then feel accomplished about that piece getting done I did this all back to back it started one day landed on the other but it was a total of nine hours as I previously mentioned and it just got done in a linear fashion like you could have totally delivered this to a client I mean you know not this because spider Gwen. it's just a practice piece for the channel but but at the same time it was that's the way I need my workflow to be if I'm gonna be a productive artist so here I jump in I'm like oh, I should clean this up a bit I was almost gonna leave it I was like kind of wondering if anybody had noticed but I'm like no let me scrutinize it a bit more clean up the line work so obviously just tone back the layer I have been doing this more as well where I draw the character 
as a floating element. I do recommend that because then you get to have the added benefit of resizing the character and moving them around, stuff like that. So now I've got a lot of flats in. I can see the piece really coming together and you know have a better idea of, of how it's gonna end up. I uh, start to uh, fill in the, the buildings. But again, with this aspect of it, oh, quick tri uh, trick or whatever with the buildings, it really speeds things up. I put all the flat colors on one layer, but then I select each uh, side edge, side plane of the building, and I use the brightness, contrast, um, setting the, what is it, it's under hue, saturation, luminosity slider, and you can brighten and tone down the, uh, the side of each building, and then flip it, so I'll, I'll paint like each building, you'll see that here in a bit, but I'll paint each building all really on that same layer, or I'll even cut it, place it to another layer, add the effects, and then paste it back down. The reason why this is important is it allows you to conserve layers and really gives you the same effect with little to no additional effort. So just something to play around with. Uh, I did mess around with the buildings for a while going back and forth. I wasn't digging it. I should have pulled reference, but uh, I will on the next one because I am getting to that point where if something's taking you too long to figure out on your own, why bother, man? I mean, make sure you do most of it, 99%, 95% of the work on your own, but then look at some good, comic art some good reference and and it's like the suit design i couldn't remember what her suit design looked like i didn't try to guess at that i think i still got a little wrong but but the um but even with the buildings it's like i wanted to fight through this a bit uh like i was trying to appease my pride or something don't waste the time grab some reference grab what you need then put it away and keep doing your thing your style will kind of mask uh that you know i don't know need for reference or whatever and so here, just adding some finishing touches and some brightness, some luminosity in different areas. Uh, pretty proud of myself. I hand painted those clouds. I think they came out decent, decent though. But, you know, so the thing is this, like with this piece, my goal was to just really create a, a piece of fan art for you guys and, and something that, that I wanted to see. I know I made her look a little bit adult. Somebody had <laughs> made that on the Instagram post. They were like, oh man, Spider-Gwen grew up. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, I tend to do that. I tend to, you know, just distort artwork into the thing that I want to see, the style that I want to see. I guess it's my own version of, of AI, right? It's like, no, I'm not going to punch it into some prompts and, and output something. I'm going to try to draw it in the way that I think I would see it. And, you know, maybe I wanted her to look more like a woman in the shot or whatever uh, versus a girl. But, but you know, th that's the fun you can have with this stuff. But the main thing that I wanted to share in this one was if you see the steps and, you you know, you go back you have a very crude uh, gesture. Again, it's more idea based. I mean, look at look how bad that is. It's that's definitely just. I had an idea in my mind, but it came out like, uh, you know, like a sloppy <laughs> version of it. I don't know. And then I had to refine that, you know. But but if I'd have gave up here and kept starting over and starting over, then I wouldn't have got to what I feel like. You know, I was pretty happy with right about here. So again, it starts off very crude. Remember, it's just like a bad painting. Uh, start with basic shapes. You see these buildings are really far off and then they get to about here They start looking a little better. The perspective probably could have been a bit better You know, I think a three-point probably would have been better now quick tip for you as well though It's kind of neat once you do get it to something like this if you keep these layers perfectly separated uh, And you know, I didn't, I didn't do the best at this, but I'll show you kind of what I mean here so if I go to Let's see everything from here squeeze down is spider gwen well no i thought it was where am i missing this is gone oh all this yeah i had a lot of layers for this character so i'm pinching and squeezing these together right and you also got to keep an eye on the art and make sure that the uh blending modes don't change that can happen uh sometimes so be careful of that but see how i can like maneuver her but look i, I didn't fill every bit like i should have and I was right there. I can either, and I'm gonna go back and probably touch this up. But see how I miss where the leg is, at least. Um, but it's a good idea to like separate these based on layers. You can recycle your backgrounds, which I think is super effective, especially if you're the you're the one that drew them, right? And then what I could do is I can squeeze all these layers together, like that, right? And so so I drew this in a. Um, yeah, so like I said, a single one-point perspective. In fact, let me show you what the... I just want to give you all the information here versus a time-lapse where you don't get to... You don't get to see all this, right? So I want to show you this stuff. 
See, and I tilted, oh, by the way, it's also a tilted horizon line. You see that? So a tilted horizon line, single lower vanishing point that gave me the reference points for all this here. Um, so again, I just want to try to make that apparent for you. You can also toggle this off if you don't like the lines in the way, and it still works based on the layers just by going to Drawing Assist, which is right there. See that? So, but the other neat thing that you can do, so see you got your character here, and you're like, Ah, the background's cool, but I really wish I would have picked a, a three-point. Well, you can still do that. I mean, you really need to draw past the edges, so, and I'll show you why here. So if you take this and you go to Freeform for your distortion, and you grab these bottom edges, look how you can pull this out. And that's pretty much a three-point perspective rather quickly. Now, again, I think you need to draw your scenes out past the edges because say you really wanted to push this, and I would. I'd probably go to something like like that right there. I mean, right, that's pretty dramatic, right? I think it adds more uh, of an impact to the scene. But now I would have to sit here, and it's not unheard of. I could probably pull it off actually, but just because I'm pretty cool. But um, you could too, by the way. Um, if we go here and we go something like this, I could probably just select. <laughs> this would be a pain in the butt, but I could do it. It's like just select each one of these areas and paint out. But you know, why do that? If you're gonna draw the background anyways, uh, just draw it a little bit further out past the edges. But but keep in mind, if you find that easier to kind of visualize drawing a low one point perspective or, or whatever, it's easy enough to distort into a three point perspective. So you might wanna play around with that concept or just draw it in a three point perspective. How about that? So I'm gonna go back, cause I, I didn't mind the way it was, but now that I see it like that, I don't know, you, you tell me if you've followed along this far in the video, uh, Give me your suggestion. Should I have done it in a three-point? Would it have looked more dynamic and interesting? Or is it fine just the way it was like that? Now past that, you know, a little bit of cell shading, a uh, little bit of drawn-in effects, but not much. It's, it's pretty simple. But again, being able to, um, to do this in a reasonable amount of, amount of time, but in a linear fashion, in a way where I didn't stop and rethink it and change it a bunch of times. I mean, I did a few base sketches that were different poses, but I was able to jump in, get a pose down, manipulate it, and get to an end result. So let me know what you think, especially what questions you have and what you wanna learn more of. I'm, I'm planning on bringing you guys more perspective drawing. I got a Facebook group uh, now, and it's it's taken off pretty well, or you know, there's a decent amount of people joining. Uh, let me know if you need a link to it, but basically I was asking people like, hey, what, you know, what do you wanna learn more of? And so I did a, uh, a poll study on there, and it came back with more votes on perspective drawing. And then it just made me think, I really gotta do more backgrounds. I've been slacking. Uh, I feel like backgrounds are one of those things where they're easy to fall out of habit of doing, but they're super important, especially if you plan on doing any kind of storytelling in any capacity, you gotta have backgrounds, right? So uh, you're gonna see, I'm gonna force myself, I'm gonna twist my own arm, and I'm gonna do more of these backgrounds for you, because they are, they're super important. They they you know, you can't have good stories without backgrounds. So anyways, let me know what you think. More content is on the way very soon. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. We're coming up to 250,000 subscribers. Can't believe it. Super appreciative. Have a great day and more on the way soon. Bye for now.